Steve, where are you going? Could be a number of different titles. It could be where are you going? Or it could have been where are you going? But what was so great is that you immediately involved the audience. I think with your speech, you hit it out of the park. And I don't think that you were using steroids, albeit you're in 1810, so I'm not really sure that is the oldest and most uh, prestigious club uh, in, the, in the district. But I enjoyed the fact that you immediately involved us by saying how many, and you, uh, you really got some response uh, from the audience. You use statistics and accurate statistics. You mentioned that you need to go on 150 calls or have 150 calls in order to sell 60 houses uh, during the year. So I thought that was really, really very well done. And I know that you're from 1810, so I'm sure that if you're a speaker representing 1810, you know the mantra of dressing appropriately. But I think when you do that, it gives you authority. And so you immediately, people are riveted to you because you have something to say and you look like you have some import to what you need to share. You use gestures very well, although in the beginning you did begin with the fig leaf, but you immediately <laughs> got away from the fig leaf and you, you really owned your space. I think sometimes I see Toastmasters who don't necessarily want to be in front of a group I mean, they want to get a competent communicator, or they want to be a distinguished Toastmaster. But I sensed with you that you really wanted to be here, that you wanted to share something with us, something of great value, and that you did that. One of the things that I thought went throughout your speech, which was something that we could all have hooked onto, was that captain. The captain of a ship is somebody, well, notwithstanding the guy that was out in the islands where he got a little too close to shore, but most captains are people who take their job very seriously. They have thousands of lives at stake. And so I thought that that was something that, that we could relate to. And you introduced it about a third of the way through your speech, but then you mentioned it again at the end. And almost for captain, captain could equal confidence. And I think that's what you were sharing with us, regardless of what our plans are, that if we do it confidently, we will be uh, more successful. Now, I know the sandwich master uses the sandwich approach, and I try to use the cookie approach, although I just read recently that Oreo cookies, the double, isn't actually a double. So you never really know. <laughs> but what, what I thought you could have done a little bit more, with a little bit more emphasis, is you talked about free things. And you asked us to, and to reiterate those later, which was good. That brought connection to the audience. But you might want to say the one first thing you want to do, and then the second thing that you want to do, you know, maybe, maybe a little bit more for emphasis. I thought your statistics were really, really good, but I would have liked to have known a little bit more about where they came from, the 5% the who, who have a plan. And then finally, what else would I say? I would just say that your speech really resonated with us. And, Early on, we talked about what did you want to do. And what you said you wanted to do was to connect with your audience. And I think that you did that in spades. You shared valuable information with us. It was simple. You used the Toastmaster rule of three. But again, you delivered a home run.